Hey everyone, Mo here from Smart Training 365. If you want to develop your physique and achieve your goal without wasting time and energy, you should know about the importance of alignment. In the context of resistance exercise, strive it to keep the direction of movement, the direction of resistance, the angle of the operating lever of the target muscle, and its origin and insertion all on the same plane will improve efficiency. When this occurs, all or most of the resistance being used during that exercise is directed toward the target muscle. Joint distortion is minimized or eliminated and the unintentional loading of smaller non-target muscles is reduced, which significantly decreases injury risk. When the markers I mentioned are not in alignment, a percentage of that load is diverted away from the target muscle and loaded onto smaller, weaker muscles. Also, joint distortion often occurs, which further increases the risk of injury. When we see someone do an standing barbell bicep curl, we take for granted that as that person pulls upward, gravity is pulling downward directly in the opposite direction, along the same plane. The plane through which the forearm, which is the operating lever of the biceps, travels is aligned with the direction of resistance and also with the origin and insertion of the biceps. In addition, the angle of the forearm is also in alignment with these markers. This alignment is not an incidental aspect of the exercise. It is essential for maximum efficiency. Notice that the forearm travels through the plane which aligns with the biceps origin and the biceps insertion. The trajectory of the forearm traveling up or down is on the same plane as the downward resistance. This is as it should be. The same can be said for all good exercises even though we often overlook the importance of this principle. When we do triceps pushdowns, we again comply with this principle. Even though we may not be entirely aware of it, the cable provides an upward resistance and we oppose it by pushing directly opposite through the same plane. The plane also aligns with the origin and insertion of the triceps. Of course, there are degrees of compliance and non-compliance based on the exercise and how well we are doing it. Perfect alignment gives us maximum efficiency. The more out of alignment these factors are, the more that efficiency is compromised. The exercise I'm showing here does comply with some rules to a degree, but can be modified to improve its efficacy, as you will discover in this video. The concept of resistance exercise is based entirely on the principle of challenging a muscle with an opposing resistance thereby causing it to adapt, meaning to strengthen. If it were not for an opposing resistance, a muscle would not be challenged. An opposing resistance refers to a load that is pulling in the opposite direction of movement. This may seem like a very obvious requirement, yet we often see people using a resistance that is not pulling directly opposite their movement during an exercise. An example of this is the torso rotation with medicine ball. The muscles that produce this horizontal movement are mostly the internal and external obliques. They are assisted a bit by the iliocostalis, which is part of the erector spinae group, which runs alongside the spine and the transverse abdominis. As I mentioned, this rotation of the torso is horizontal, left to right. However, the resistance provided by the weight medicine ball is vertical. The ball is being pulled downward by gravity Therefore, the horizontal movement and the muscles that produce that motion are entirely unchallenged by this downward pulling resistance. There is no opposition to the horizontal movement. The muscles which produce torso rotation should be made to work against a resistance that pulls opposite the direction of movement. During this exercise, the muscles that are preventing the ball from falling toward the ground are the ones that are being challenged by the weight of the ball. These include the shoulders, biceps, triceps, lower back, etc. But these are not the focus of the exercise. And this exercise is not ideal to work these muscles. So using a medicine ball to work the oblique muscles is like working the biceps while lying on the side and performing dumbbell curls. The direction of movement and the direction of resistance are not on the same plane. The solution is simple. One option is to switch from using a weighted ball to elastic bands, for example, that pulls from either one side or the other. You then rotate the torso in the opposite direction of the band's pull. It must be performed in two separate movements because it's two separate muscles. The left side muscles rotate the torso to the left and the right side to the right. 
each direction of movement requires its own opposing resistance. Then there is alignment. Another exercise we often see people do which lacks alignment is the one meant to be shoulder rotator cuff exercise. But this horizontal movement cannot possibly be challenged by a vertical resistance. The resistance should come from the opposite direction of movement. The weight I'm holding in my hand is being pulled downward. It's being prevented from falling by the biceps. But this is not meant to be a biceps exercise, right? Meanwhile, the rotator cuff muscles are not encountering opposition to the movement, even though they are the target muscles. In reality, people who perform this exercise are doing two separate movements, although many may be entirely unaware of it. They are doing an inward and outward rotation of the humerus, which is the upper arm bone. These two motions are produced by two different sets of muscles. But the way this pseudo exercise is performed, neither of these two movements is challenged. What I'm doing here produces almost no benefit whatsoever to the target muscles, which are the internal and external shoulder rotators. In order to work the internal shoulder rotators, one must work against an outward pulling resistance. And to work the external shoulder rotators, one must work against an inward pulling resistance. These are two separate directions of movement and each requires its own separate opposing resistance. The two directions of movement, internal and external shoulder rotation, cannot be challenged simultaneously. As you can see, there is alignment between the direction of movement and the direction of resistance. They are both on the same plane. There are different ways to do this exercise. What's essential is that the resistance originates from a direction that is directly opposite the concentric movement. In the example I showed you, we established that a horizontal movement performed with a vertical resistance does not benefit the muscle producing the horizontal movement. However, misalignment is not always as obvious as that. Here I'm performing a supine dumbbell press improperly. The reason it's improper is because the direction of movement is not on the same plane as the direction of resistance. I'm moving my arms at an angle that is approximately 20 degrees from the vertical line. You can also see that my humerus, which is the operating lever of the target muscle, the pectorals, is also not aligned with the direction of resistance. This misalignment is less obvious than in the previous two examples. Nevertheless, there is still lack of an alignment occurring. Because this misalignment is not as drastic as the vertical and horizontal, the degree of compromise is not as great. However, it's still significant. Rather than getting zero benefit, there is about a 20% reduction of load to the target muscle. Further, the amount of load that is reduced from the target muscles, which in this case the pectorals, is shifted over to other weaker non-target muscle as well as to the joints. In addition, by moving the operating levers, which is the upper arms and the forearms, in the direction that is not on the same plane as the direction of resistance, a person causes the secondary lever, which would otherwise be neutral, to become active in a potentially injurious way. We see that happens when we tilt the forearm toward our feet and toward our head while intending to perform a supine dumbbell press. By failing to keep the forearm aligned with gravity during a supine dumbbell press, it acts as a wrench when the elbow is bent. Depending on which of the two misalignments I showed is occurring, it causes internal or external rotation of the humerus in the shoulder socket. This forces the smaller, weaker rotator muscle to prevent further misalignment and could easily strain them in the process. As mentioned earlier, perfect alignment in the resistance exercise also requires that the origin and insertion of the target muscle is aligned with the direction of movement the direction of resistance and the operating levers primary and secondary of the target muscle. Here we see what this would look like if we were to look straight downward through the plane of resistance, meaning gravity, and the direction of the movement when alignment is correct. We can clearly see that there is also alignment with the pectoral muscles origin on the sternum and the pectoral insertion on the humerus. This is not a coincidence. It is the only way to load the target muscle without diverting a portion of the load to unintended muscles and without joint distortion. 
any deviation from the alignment would result in proportional diminishment of the load to the target muscle and commensurate transference of the load to the other non-target muscle plus possibly some degree of joint strain. Here we can see a side view of the perfect alignment. From this angle you can see that the upper arms as well as the forearms are also aligned with the shoulder joint and also with the origin and insertion of the pectorals and with the direction of resistance and movement. Let's look at another exercise, supine dumbbell triceps extension. Show an alignment as well as the absence of alignment. We'll also identify which angles are best for checking the alignment of an exercise. The side view angle allows us to see the resistance curve where in the range of motion the forearm crosses perpendicularly with the gravity. From this angle, we can see where the operating lever is most active and least active. What we cannot see, however, from this angle is whether or not there is perfect alignment. When viewing an exercise for the purpose of checking alignment, we must view it from a perspective that allows us to see the planes of the movement and of resistance as represented by straight lines. This side view allows us to see the arc of the resistance curve, but not the plane of the resistance or of the movement. If we go back and look at the barbell curl exercise I showed earlier, you will notice it's not a side view. That is why we are able to draw a straight line through the plane of movement and through the plane of resistance. The same is true when analyzing the triceps push down. A side view would allow us to see the arc of the resistance curve, but not the planes of the resistance and of movement. A front view, however, would allow us to see the plane of resistance and of movement as represented by straight lines. An overhead view would also allow us to see both of these. Here we can see the plane through which gravity pulls, as well as the plane through which the movement travels, both viewed as straight lines. The first requirement to see if the exercise is properly aligned is that those two planes overlap with each other and appear as one line as it's the case here. The arrow pointing up indicating concentric movement and the arrow pointing down indicating the direction of resistance are on the same plane. Notice also that the origin and the insertion of the triceps are on the same plane. This is perfect alignment. It is an overhead view of the same exercise. Again, we see the line which represents the plane through which the concentric movement travels as well as the direction of resistance. That same line overlaps with the origin and insertion of the triceps and also with the operating lever of the triceps. Again, this shows perfect alignment. Now let's see what misalignment looks like viewing the supine dumbbell triceps extension from the same two perspectives. We can clearly see that the vertical down arrow representing the direction of gravity is not on the same plane as the diagonal up arrow representing the direction of movement. Since the elbow is a hinge joint and can only extend in one direction, the direction of movement automatically follows the angle of the upper arm. So although the origin and the insertion of the triceps is aligned with the direction of movement, the origin and the insertion are not aligned with the direction of resistance. The operating lever of the triceps, which is the forearm, is also not aligned with the direction of gravity. Since the humerus and the forearm are not vertical, they are now loading and straining the rotator cuff muscles. In addition, due to the lateral tilt of the upper arms, the pectorals will now be slightly loaded. Where is the load on those two non-target muscle group coming from? it's being subtracted from the triceps load. The lack of alignment causes a diminishment of the load on the triceps and diverts that internal shoulder rotators is not contributing to the benefit of the triceps. And it's also not necessarily productive for pecs and internal rotators. It's not enough load to adequately stimulate the pecs and could easily be too much load for the internal shoulder rotators. The issue is whether or not the direction of movement and the direction of resistance are on the same plane is almost always present, even if an exercise does not qualify as an ideal anatomical movement for a particular muscle. Having the direction of the movement and the direction of resistance on the same plane is vital for preventing the twisting of joints and the unnecessary loading of smaller muscles that may not be able to handle the load that being diverted to them. Here we see three different directions of movement. The first one shows a straightforward direction of movement as well as the direction of resistance is on the same plane as the direction of movement. 
You can also see that the humerus and forearm are on the same plane. As such, this is a good alignment. In the second option, the direction of movement has changed to a slightly upward, meaning incline angle. Notice, however, that the pulley has been lowered so that the direction of resistance is still on the same plane as the direction of movement. The cable, indicating the directions of resistance, is also on the same plane as the humerus and the forearm. As a result, there is no twisting of the shoulder joint. This is also a good alignment. In the third option, the direction of movement has been changed to a slightly decline angle. Notice, however, that the pulley has been raised so that the direction of resistance is still on the same plane and parallel with the direction of movement. Please note that the exercises I showed are not Brick 20 exercises. I only use them to explain the direction of resistance and alignment. In order to fully grasp the essence of proper biomechanics in the resistance exercise, one of the first things to understand is the importance of having the movement of an exercise to be challenged by an opposing resistance. The more directly opposite the resistance, the greater the percentage of that resistance will be loaded into the target muscle. The less directly opposite the direction of resistance is, the more that load will be diluted from the target muscle and transferred over to non-target muscles. It is also more likely that joint strain will occur. If you enjoy biomechanics like I do, check out the Physics of Fitness online course. You can learn more about what I talked about in this video and other factors in greater detail. If you're looking for a workout program based on the biomechanical principle that we teach, visit our website smarttraining365.com. And of course, if you have any question, email me at mo at smarttraining365.com. Train smart. Take care.